Euronet Plus Panorama is a weekly review of European news broadcast by our network of EU radio stations. Welcome back to Euronet Plus Panorama. Is there a way of protecting our elections against external influence? EU ministers have this week paved the way for a kind of rapid reaction force to tackle such threats. In a context of increasing hybrid threats, in other words, disinformation, cyber attacks and attacks on critical infrastructure, instrumentalised migration and election interference, EU affairs ministers met in Brussels on Tuesday the 21st of May to discuss the scale of the problem and seek solutions. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk told a post-council press conference that the threat is very real. Polsky Radio shares his statement. We discussed this at the European Council. Reports from many European capitals were unequivocal. Russia is preparing various types of interference, including in the electoral process, before the European Parliament elections. This is not the first time this has happened, but the scale is increasing and becoming more worrying. One thing that is clear from Polish and other sources is that Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia and to some extent, Finland are most threatened by such interference and activities. The EU considers the establishment of hybrid threat rapid response teams to be one of the most important tools to support EU member states and partner countries in countering emerging threats. But Germany's Minister of State for Europe, Anna Lordmann, wants to go even further, as AMS reports. We have also presented a declaration together with France, Poland and five other member states in which we call for a further 20 concrete measures to strengthen the EU against attacks on democracy from outside and also from within. On the one hand, this involves us working more closely together to combat disinformation, but also to strengthen political education and media literacy. We need a European media platform, for example. It primarily falls to the European Commission to push this policy forward after the June elections. But our joint responsibility right now is to push back, adds Lohrmann, who has recently discussed this issue of external influence with the Deputy Prime Minister of Moldova, an EU candidate country that also seems to be attracting a lot of Russian attention. Another candidate country, Georgia, is attempting to bring in its own legislation to prevent so-called foreign interference. But in this case, the draft law is widely seen, even within Georgia, as a silencing mechanism to clamp down on pro-Western voices. If the controversial NGO law, otherwise known as the Foreign Agents Law or the Russian Law, comes into force, any NGOs and independent media outlets that receive funding from abroad will have to register as being under foreign influence. A similar law has existed in Russia since 2012, as Aude Merlin, a specialist on the Caucasus at the ULB in Brussels, explains in an interview with a colleague from RTBF. What is happening is that a form of authoritarian transition is taking place. Yes, absolutely. You mentioned the term copy-paste earlier, and we shouldn't forget that this law is a copy-paste of a Russian law. In 2012, when Vladimir Putin returned to the presidency, he very quickly passed a law on foreign agents. His law stipulates that NGOs, associations and organizations that receive subsidies, funding or aid from abroad must register with the Ministry of Justice and indicate on all their documentation that they are foreign agents. In other words, this stigmatizes them, ostracizes them, and cuts them off from the vast majority of the Russian population. But Georgia's ruling Georgian Dream Party, created and financially backed by mega-rich businessman Bidzina Ivanishvili, is pro-European, isn't it? 
la société géorgienne est effectivement pro-européenne et qu'on le voit à travers les sondages. Georgian society is indeed pro-European, as can be seen from the polls. Over 80% of Georgians are in favor of Georgia joining the European Union. But here we need to point out a blurring of categories. The Georgian Dream Party has always, until recently, been pro-European. While it has continued to repeat this watchword, this slogan, in reality it has moved further and further away from democratic reforms and increasingly seized power. De réformes démocratiques et le pouvoir a été de plus en plus donc ramassé. Anna Lorman calls upon the Georgian government to listen to its citizens and stay on course for EU membership. We can see how important this is every day on the streets of Georgia, where a very committed population repeatedly shows that their future lies in the EU, in Europe. We, the German government, see it the same way, and we once again urge the Georgian government not to miss this window of opportunity and to bring Georgia closer to the EU instead of further away, as would happen if this NGO law comes to pass. BNR asks Dejan Kyuranov, a political scientist at Sofia's Centre for Liberal Strategies, why Europe is so concerned about the emergence of such a law. Georgia is still a third country after all. Because the law is anti-European, because the Georgian constitution says that Georgia should be integrated into Europe, one of Ivanishvili's guys recently said, this constitution, we will override it, we will amend it, we will draw up a new one, whatever it takes. This is the typical bandit-style rule of a country that has the democratic facade of a parliamentary majority. Last Saturday, the 18th of May, Georgia's president, Salome Zurabishvili, vetoed the bill and appealed to the government not to overrule her, although it does have enough votes to be able to do so. Thousands of Georgians have also taken to the streets to protest against the government's proposal. One of these is Mariam Zhazia, a Georgian film and documentary producer who has achieved international acclaim. Our BNR colleague asks the filmmaker what consequences the proposed law and her part in the protests might have for her personally. If the foreign agent law is passed in Georgia, I won't be able to make my films. Because of a lack of financing in Georgia, my old films are mostly financed by the help, with the help of European partners and co-producers, um, European funds. And by this law, if 20, minimum 20% of financing comes uh, from abroad, the organizations need to be registered as a foreign agent. And uh, besides this, I have also a fear that uh, if they will pass this law, I will be also targeted uh, by the government, not only me, also some, some of my activist friends, filmmaker friends. Last year, my film was already criticized by the Minister of Culture in December last year, and she was threatening me uh, publicly that they will take me to the court. court. Of course, with this law, she will have legal rights uh, to do whatever they, uh, th she wants with the people who are critical, and I am one of them. And what about the president's recent veto? Might this change anything, for better or for worse? After the president's veto, I think they will increase pressure on the protesters. Uh, I think the only way to, to pressure the pro-Russian politics is through the sanctioning by the sanctions by the West. Our government tried to take take our country and our children, next generation, to Russia. Uh, and at the same time, they sent their children to study in Europe and the U.S. When If the sanctions will happen and when their children feel the threat that they won't be able to travel to the West, then they will start to understand us and then it might be some change. But I don't know how, why uh, it takes so long from Europe to start sanctions, at least to start sanctioning our oligarch Pidina Yuanishvili, who is financing our current government. Estonian Foreign Minister Margus Tsakna, who recently spoke at a large demonstration in Georgia, agrees that the EU has no choice but to act 
ka see kandidaat staatuse otsus anti näelda krediidina candidate status was granted as a credit so to speak for georgia to take the next steps which they do not seem to be doing very serious discussions are already underway about the next steps for the european union either sanctions or withdrawal of candidate status However, one serious issue that we have put on the table is that of suspending the visa-free regime. This is something that concerns all Georgians. It sends a very clear message that this government lied to its own people in the first place about its real aspirations towards Europe. And secondly, the promises it made to the EU have not been fulfilled. These processes have been set in motion and over the coming weeks it will become clearer where we are heading. Yet Polish historian and political scientist Dr. Łukasz Adamski tells Polski Radio that in his view this one is up to the Georgians themselves to sort out. I would like to be optimistic but I am rather pessimistic about the West's ability to influence Georgia and the Georgians. It is really the job of the Georgians themselves to get their country in order so that no one can undermine its pro-European course. We'll need to wait and see how things develop. But it's highly likely that this subject will find itself on the agenda at the next European summit on the 27th and 28th of June. That's all for today. Don't forget to tune in again next week when we're taking a look at another topical issue from a Euronet Plus perspective.